the affiliate account functionality here. So here's our main dashboard underneath the affiliate account. And we're gonna be able to go into affiliate right here. From here, you're gonna be able to see uh, all of the options you have as an affiliate or a partner. You'll be able to see the initial licenses that you have set up, whether they're free licenses to use for lead generation or paid licenses. From here, you can also add or remove any of the assessments that are inside of the platform as well and be able to start managing any of your white label uh, structure. So you can replace the icons here, change any of the colors, and also check out what your usage plan is. It's a new feature to the affiliate and the partnership plan. From here, you can actually set up how you wanna be invoiced when you're using this with clients, set up what your pricing structure is and licenses that you've been able to use, and then be able to see expiring licenses that are coming up for clients when they are. And of course, we have a full documented API that you can integrate from here. It's really good for anyone who has a lot of clients and they need to be able to manage doing risk assessments, ongoing governance, structure, VCSO work, consulting work, advisory with a number of different clients. So inside of the uh, affiliate dashboard here and looking at these clients, you can jump into any client that you want and you'll be able to see the client assessments, reports that have been taken, any organizational stats, demographics about that client as well. You can also see contact information, see the latest scores, trending lines, reports. You can see assessments that they've taken, as well as be able to even start an assessment right from this screen for a client. You can also check out reports that they have been completed, which reports, when they were done, and you can pin and save different reports as well. So you can come back to those at a later time. From here, you can also change the license types for clients as well. So if you're moving somebody from a free license to a paid or a different paid license, you can make that uh, change right here in the management. So let's jump into an actual client account, see what you can do. So for clients, we're, we're really trying to make it, it easy for both them and for you as a partner to be able to access their information, conduct assessments, as well as gain uh, better insight into what their security posture is. So underneath assessments, you're really gonna be able to start any client uh, assessment that you want from this screen, which is really nice. You can start an assessment brand new, or you can start an assessment from a previously completed assessment. Because of our Rosetta Stone and mapping of controls, we have crosswalk between each of the assessments. You're able to actually go from one assessment type to something completely different. So any of the assessments that you are starting, they're structured and built out uh, very much the same way. So you can uh, right size what's being done inside of this. There's sections on each of the assessments and they're broken up kind of by psychology. So you're gonna ask questions about installed software in this section versus software that you've created uh, yourself in application development. There's different controls held for each. So that's a nice feature. And also questions are dynamic. So you're able to, uh, you know, if you are doing application development, you'll be asked questions about that. But if you're not, we're not gonna ask you those questions because they're not relevant whatsoever. So each of these questions are also built out the same way. You can assign a user to a question or you can assign them to an entire section. You can also gather evidence as well for each of these questions. And it's nice, you can either add and upload a file directly, or you can link a file using a URL right here. You can give it a description and then add that new evidence. And once that's done, the evidence is uploaded into Real CISO and attached to that question. And then we later match it to all the controls that that question supports. So as you go through and you complete an assessment and you've answered all of the questions going through each, you can then generate your report and produce a report. You come to your report screen. So these reports are all built very similar as well. Uh, you have a high level score. This is pure numerator over denominator math. Uh, we're not giving you a, a you know, red, yellow, green. This is just how many of the controls you're meeting. If there is a high level control set within the uh, framework, you'll be able to see that right here. So inside of NIST 2.0, the new NIST CSF framework, we have govern, identify, protect, detect, respond, recover. So we can see how we're doing on each of these assessments. You can export this picture into a image. You can drop that right into your board deck if you want to be able to use that there. You can sort questions by either unmet or by group. 
And each of these questions is well similarly structured in the assessment. You can assign a user to look into this question with a due date. And you can also see the maturity of the control as well. So we use a uh, mapped set of controls underneath each of the uh, framework controls to be able to help you support how would you answer this from an auditable standpoint. So you can see each of the controls outlines exactly what you could be doing, and you'll see the question that you're asked and associated. If you want to jump back to the assessment where you answer this question, you can do that. Each of these control questions or the high-level controls, you can add into the remediation module as well. From here, you can then start managing your risk through a risk register or a set of projects. So you'll be able to see each of the controls, how you're meeting, how you look against the framework. You'll also be able to add in controls uh, or meet controls with products as well. Say you're looking at uh, bringing on doing an incident response tabletop. We have each of these products mapped to a, a set of controls that they meet when implemented. And this is something that's very unique to Real CISO. You'll be able to see all the controls met by this implementation of this product or solution. And as a affiliate or a partner, you're actually able to put your own solutions into here, and map those controls as well. So we can work with you on that. Each of these can also be implemented. And when implemented, we close the loop on uh, what this actually does for you inside of your assessment. So future assessments will have these controls marked. But if you're not sure you haven't implemented those yet, you can actually see what it would do for you. So you can add this to your environment. And what we'll see is what would an incident response tabletop look like? So we can see that if we actually conducted an incident response tabletop and the exercises outlined in this product here, the blue represents the controls that would be met. And then as you scroll down, each of the controls where this is met, it'll show up next to. So you can actually start what ifing an environment and looking at your target state, not just your current state. And that's very important as you're trying to decide what to start doing inside of your organization. And like I said, once you've actually implemented a solution, they'll actually start showing up in your active assessments. And then in future assessments and reports, those controls are all met, which makes it very easy to then determine what I'm doing, what do I need to do, what else is available. So reports that can come out of the platform as well. You can print the report, you can export evidence, you can view your evidence, you can start and push all of your gaps controls into remediation as well. So the printable reports brings you over to this screen and you're able to see the boilerplate and the information we have for each of these assessments. And you can see each of the controls and the maturity on each of them as well. From here, use your browser to be able to print a PDF or if you want to print to a printer, that all works right here as well. You can also download your evidence or you can export that into a Word doc and provide your own template if you'd like. If you bounce back to the report, you can also jump into and see the evidence. So any evidence that's been collected on the assessment, you can see what those are. Or you can upload new evidence here. You can use this screen as well to work with your client, be able to determine what you're doing or not doing. Maybe we need to add evidence, but you can just quickly look and see what evidence is collected so you can support the assessment that you're completing. Overall, it's a really great way to be able to manage, initially assess the uh, organization's security posture, but then as you take future assessments, you're able to then gauge you know, progress um, as well. And that's, that's really where you're able to like do quite a bit. And here, we move any gaps or solutions into a risk register, and you start managing each of these risks like a project. So again, you can assign users to tasks, with due dates, and they'll start getting emails with these annotations and, and being um, tasked with each of these or assigned. And then as you complete tasks, you mark them off. And then once you've completed a task, and you can really build these however you'd like, you can acknowledge those, that's all captured and stamped. And then you'll see that those are moved to the end of your list. So they're off of kind of your priority. From here as well, you can decide how you want to set up your risks, what the status is, what the treatment is, and we'll actually be able to start determining what your risk rankings are as well.
So it's a nice way to do risk registration, manage your risks, and also couple in the projects to be able to actually complete anything that's uh, that's determined to be a gap or deficiency in your platform in, in your cybersecurity environment. Another nice feature is the ability to create a security transparency page. So here we're able to take in the information, you can upload your logos. What we're doing is we're pushing anything out of a risk assessment or recently completed one, the controls that are met into this page. You can choose which ones you're doing or not. You can also select which certificates you wanna say you have. You can link access to those certificates if you want publicly. And then we're able to create and generate this security transparency page. And then you can use this page either on your website in the footer or potentially even if you wanted to share this URL with customers who are asking about your security posture, internal stakeholders, even use it as part of your board uh, designed uh, you know, presentation or leadership. So it's just a really easy way to be able to show others who are asking what you're doing without having to go through a full risk assessment or give them a report. We're also able to push information into an insurance page. And this is really, we've, we've worked with the uh, number of insurance brokers and carriers to be able to determine what are the key controls that they are looking for to be able to give cyber insurance or tech E&O insurance to companies. So you can actually do this for your clients, you do this for yourself, be able to determine and really kind of hone in controls that are met and not met. And again, looking back at the specific controls that carriers are looking for in order to grant or provide